told them, said, why last, why, where is he? Where lives he? And they showed him where he was. He said, move the stone, roll it away. And they said, Lord, he's thinking about now. But they did, and he called him and he came forth. And told him, I am the resurrection and the life. He that believeth in me, though he were dead, yet shall he live. Amen. You are a believer in Jesus Christ. There is hope for the resurrection of the dead. There is no loss, but a forever gain. There is no forever goodbye. It's only temporarily. But as we have gathered here to say goodbye temporarily, not permanently now, if you are a child of God, but we're only saying goodbye temporarily to Ryan Hood. And the Bible declares that believers in Jesus Christ will meet again in heaven. God is not man that he should lie. We should see him again. All of us must pass this way. Time of bereavement. Now, we don't intend to hold you long out here in the cold. And so we're going to ask Pastor Joan to come up and play his part. And then afterward, Pastor Worthington will lead us in a song, and then I'll preach the eulogy. May God bless and be upon you. We all face times like this. No family is excluded. Amen. Amen. Let us bow our head for a moment of prayer. Hallelujah. Lord, as we surrender before your throne of grace, Lord, we surrender giving you honor, praise, and giving you all the glory. God, we surrender knowing that you are the great I am, that you are whole, all power, and hold all authority. Every life is in your hand. Lord, we believe today, brother, young, young brother, who is life, is still in your hands, Father. Lord, as we come to your throne of grace, we ask that you unite the family, that you comfort them, that you let them know, God, you have already declared in the word to be absent from the body is to be present with the Lord. We thank you, Father, for giving us Ryan. We thank you, Father, for the life that he lived. We thank you, Father, that you put him in a loving family that supported him, that covered him, and a family that raised him in the admonition of the Lord. We thank you, Father, that you said that a man of a woman is born of a woman and full of trouble in a few days, Father. Then, God, you said they'll cut down. But you said, shall they live again? For, God, you know. God, we ask right now, God, as we stand in your presence, we give thanks to you for just loving us and caring us. We thank you for your son, Jesus. For you said, God, that you so love this world that you gave your only begotten son that whosoever would believe in him shall not perish, 
but shall have everlasting life. Now, God, as we prepare to close this moment of prayer, we know that you already hear our prayers and answering our prayers. But, God, we ask right now, Father, if there be any presence this afternoon that don't know you for the free pardon of their sins, we ask that you touch their hearts, that you move mightily in their spirit, that today, Father, they'll surrender and make you Lord over their lives. For God, you said no man knows the day nor the hour. You said that we should live every day like it's our last day. Today, God, we thank you for the life that has been lived. We pray, Father, that he is in your presence. And God, we ask God that many of us, that we would get our business straight with you that we may see Brother Ryan again. Lord, in your Jesus' name we pray. Amen, amen, and amen. From the book of Psalms, the 23rd number of Psalms, David makes the declaration unto the Lord, being a child of God. For David says, from the New King James, but he says, the Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He leads me in the paths. He leads me beside still water. He restored my soul. He leads me in the path of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadows of death, I will fear no evil. For you are with me, your rod, your staff, they comfort me. You prepare the table before me in the presence of my enemy. You anoint my head with oil, my cup runs over. Surely, goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. And here's the part I love. And I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. It is at this time that what we believe count the most. That Pastor Evan said, Martha told Jesus, if you had been here, my brother wouldn't have died. She said, but I know that even now, whatsoever you ask of your father, he'll give it to you. Jesus said, you'll see your brother again. She said, I know, I know I see him in the resurrection. He said, I am the resurrection and the life. He that believeth in me, though he were dead, Yet shall he live, he that liveth and believeth in me shall never die. Then he asked an important question of Martha. He said, believest thou this? And she made a confession. She said, I believe that thou art the Christ, the Son of God that will come into the world. I want to just sing a portion of this song to remind us that we all going to have a great day of reunion in that place we call heaven. Through the years Keep on Talking Oh Lord I'm talking Through the storm and the rain 
Lord, keep me from the path of sin. Tree. 
to the pastor of Provident Baptist Church, Pastor Worthington and Pastor Roy Jones, and to all the other ministers that are here in the gospel of Jesus Christ, and to this, especially to this bereaved family. Jesus sees it all. And he is with us. The Spirit of the Holy Ghost is with all of us at this time. From 2 Corinthians, chapter 5. Beginning with verse number one. And this epistle to the church of Corinth, as Paul is giving them competent words, he said, For we know that if our earthly house of this tabernacle was dissolved, we have a building of God, and house not made with hands, eternal in the heavens. For in this we groan honestly, desiring to be clothed upon with our house, which is from heaven. If so be that being clothed, we shall not be found naked. For we that are in this tabernacle do groan, being burdened, not for that we would be unclothed, but clothed upon, that mortality might be swallowed up of life. Now he that has wrought us for the self-same Thing is God, who also has given unto us the earnest of the Spirit. Therefore, we're always confident, knowing that while we are at home in the body, we're absent from the Lord. For we walk by faith. That is where we're at now, bereaved family, not by sight. We're confident, I say, and willing rather to be absent from the body and to be present with the Lord. Whereas Paul one time said that it is far better to be with Christ. I say now to this bereaved family, the ones who have been deprived through the death of their loved one, Ryan. Whereas there's nothing wrong with sorrowing over his death. For there's nothing wrong with dropping sorrow for tears. But one thing the Lord doesn't want you to have. The Lord doesn't want you to have a troubled heart about his death. Because a place in heaven has already been prepared for him and all others who believe on Jesus Christ. The Lord doesn't want you to grieve like unbelievers who have no hope. Because if you believe that Jesus Christ died and rose again, which he did. And so we believe that God would take back with Jesus those who have died believing in him. And Ryan, the Lord has taken back to be with him. And this goes to show us that death has no age limit at all. The young are not guaranteed that they will live older, live longer than those who are older. Neither is there's a guarantee that the old will not outlive the young. Ryan at this very moment is more alive than he has ever been before. He has gone up higher from the low. Out of that old clay tenant body into a house that is immortal, living forever to never decay again. A body that death cannot touch, that sin cannot taint. A body likened to Jesus' own glorious body. That's what John says now. Now to the family, 
and especially his mother. Diane Ryan was a young man that any parent would have been proud of. I say this because the Bible says in Proverbs chapter 10 and verse 1 that a wise son maketh his father glad, but a foolish son is the grief of his mother. And in Proverbs 17 and 25 it reads, A foolish son is a grief to his father and bitterness to her that birthed him in the world. And you know, when I first met Ryan, I had him in my class when I was a coach at Russell County High School. He was a very manable student. Always had a joyful smile. That's what I remember him by. and was handsome to all the girls. <laughs> he was one I had no trouble out of at all. One young man who did his work. And as you can see from the obituary throughout his life, he has been a productive young man. And when I say productive, I mean productive. And here it is. He wasn't a son that brought grief to his mother heart. Never, Diane, have you had sleepless night worrying about Ryan being in the streets. Never have you cried sorrowing all night because he was disobedient. No. Never have you walked the floor all night wondering, was he going to get killed hanging out with that heathen crowd? Never have you gotten a phone call that he was in jail for drugs. Never have you gotten a phone call that he was in jail for possession of theft. He was a young man who always was productive and he was close and he loved his mother. Believe me when I tell you, Diane, that there are mothers here today who cannot say about their son, what I've said about Ryan, as far as him not getting in any trouble, not causing you any trouble at all. And that's a great thing. That's a great thing to have a son who never gave you any trouble. Whereas you never had sleepless night wondering where he was at or what he was doing. And even though you hate to see him go and wish he had outlived you, but still you have something to rejoice about is that you had a good son, an obedient son, but most important, you had a saved son. It was every Friday that Diane shared with me that she would get a chance to talk with Ryan. And oh, what joy they had looking forward to every Friday. And that was a time when Ryan would have gone back to Jordan, but was delayed for going for almost a year. For almost a year. And at this time, the Lord already knew, listen to me carefully now, that he would call him home soon to be with him. And this is why he delayed Ryan returning for a year so that he could spend that precious time with his dearly beloved mother and family. And this is why God word tell us in Isaiah 55, 8 through 9, for my thoughts are not your thoughts, neither are your ways my ways, says the Lord. As the heaven are higher than the earth, so are my ways than your ways, and my thoughts than your thoughts. Whereas our loved one's death brings sorrows to our heart, it brings glory to God's name. This is what God told, what Jesus told Peter. 
And this is why the songwriter William Cowper said, God moves in a mysterious way, his wonders to perform. He plants his footstep in the sea and rise upon the storm. Deep in unfathomable minds of never failing skill, he treasures up his bright design and works his sovereign's will. Ye feel for saints, fresh courage take. The clouds you so much dread are big with mercy and shall break in blessing on your head. Judge not the Lord by feeble sense, but trust him for his grace. Behind a frowning providence, he hides a smiling face. His purpose will ripen fast, unfolding every hour. The bud may have a bitter taste, but sweet would be the flower. It was bitter. Yes, it was bitter and painful to hear the news of Ryan's death. Oh, what bitter taste it was for his mother. Oh, what bitter taste it was for his sisters and brothers. Oh, what bitter taste it was for his friend. Oh, what bitter taste it was for his family. But oh, how sweet the flower in heaven. Oh, how sweet the flower is Ryan Hood in heaven. That sweet flower is forever and forever in glory with Jesus Christ. The bud may have a bitter taste. Oh, that might be a bitter taste for some time now. But here it is where the bud have the bitter taste down here. There's sweet joy of that flower up there. Ryan has gone home to be with the Lord, our Savior, and Jesus Christ. And he is better off than every soul that's down here. Yes, it's bitter. Yes, it's hard. But God weighs in our ways, his thoughts and not our thoughts. He knows just exactly what he's doing. Now as I close this eulogy, for every death, there's a meaning behind it. And what I want to ask you, those of you all who are here, if you are not saved, you don't have no hope until you accept Jesus Christ into your life. If you are not saved, God is not your father. He is only your creator. He becomes your father when you accept Jesus Christ into your life. Now for those of you here who profess to be saved and only God knows, but you're backslidden. You've gotten out of the church. You don't have a covering. You don't have a church family. You don't have a church home. But the Holy Spirit is speaking to you, telling you to get back in the church. Get off the wrong road and get back on the straight and narrow. And get your life right. If you had to die tonight, where would your soul be in the morning? If you had to die right now and profess to be a Christian and not live in the life that God would have you to live, you would face him in nothing but shame. But you have time to get your life right, to get back on the Lord's side. And for those of you who are living the life and trying to do what's right, tell you what the Apostle Paul told the Church of Corinth is to remain steadfast in the faith and continue to be unmovable, abounding in the work of the Lord. Ryan is gone, but we'll see him again, those who are saved. That's a promise from the Lord Almighty.
and those that we love, let us not hold on to them too tightly because they will pass away like we all will one day. God bless you.